Get over to Pilot's Requiem. In uh, this video, it's going to be like a little bit of a introduction to what's called a tactical formation. Um, we're going to go over the line of breast formation and how to perform visual scanning. But here, I'm just flying along in the hurricane uh, by myself. You know, I'm just flying around looking for targets, doing my usual scan, trying to clear my six o'clock as best as I can. Looking around, you can kind of see a little bit of a fight going on back there, as well as one off my nose. If I see a target, I'm going to fly over there and head towards it. But I'm getting hit from behind, so I wasn't able to clear my six effectively enough, and uh, it's likely because I was flying solo. And even though this does end up with a better result than it could have been, and then I'm able to just watch this guy overshoot with his uh, high amount of airspeed and then uh, shoot him down, kind of illustrates that even when you are looking around as best as you can, you're not always going to actually find. Um, the bad guy is going to get you, so we're going to look at the ways in which you can mitigate that by flying with a wingman. It's going to be the Unseen Bandit, which is the one that's going to get you most of the time. And uh, when you're flying solo, you have a huge blind spot behind you that is very difficult to clear by yourself. So if you want to avoid this kind of problem, you should be flying with a wingman. When you have a wingman, you'll have a mutual support contract between you, which will standardize your flying, so you both know what's expected of you in order to create mutual support for the flight. The contract involves knowing your responsibilities, how to perform lookout doctrine for threat detection, the formation expectations such as power settings, role changes, and things like that, as well as being able to communicate effectively and know what tactics to use for a situation. Without a contract, your flight is just a group of airplanes in the same area. So when we look at tactical formation, this involves how a flight of two or more aircraft work together using a loose deuce doctrine in various formations. You have a basic two ship element, which you can use a line abreast or wedge formation, while a four ship flight can use a variety of other formations, which we're not going to cover here today. The most common formation you're going to fly is line abreast. This is when you're both flying a beam each other, and this is the basic principle to take away, but it's going to be your horizontal separation and the altitude stack, which is going to vary depending on the aircraft. This is because aircraft are going to fly at different speeds. So if we look at World War II propeller aircraft, uh, it's a slower airspeed, guns only, and within visual range. So that means you're going to have a distance between you of about two to 3,000 feet with a stack of plus or minus 500 feet. So going into the cockpit of the P-51, I've got the simulator paused. So if we look out to our right, we're going to have our wingman in position here, stacked 500 foot higher at a distance of between you know, two and 3,000 feet. So it's going to be around about half a nautical mile. And this is the position you want to see uh, when you're looking at your wingman if you're both flying line abreast. Now when you start flying jets, you're going to be operating at faster air speeds. This is going to allow for a much wider lateral separation for support between four and 12,000 feet, which is out to about two nautical miles, as well as a higher vertical separation as well between two and 6,000. Uh, airplane size also becomes a factor because you don't want to be so far away that you won't actually be able to see your wingman. And uh, jets will also be incorporating guns and missiles uh, as well as an air-to-air -air attack and feature in some and you can be operating beyond visual range with all aspect weapons this will allow for new tactics to be used as well uh, when you're flying jets all right so jumping into the f5 again the simulator's paused and looking out to the right this is a uh, one nautical mile separation with a stack of around 2,000 feet and uh, you kind of see with the small profile of the f5 it gets harder to see um, out at this far this is why it's really important to be able to follow your contract and fly the specified airspeed heading and that way you know exactly where each other's going to be. Now you start getting into more capable aircraft with a better beyond visual range capability such as an F-16. Uh, you can increase that horizontal separation out to about 2 nautical miles and you can also increase your vertical stack to plus or minus 6,000 feet. This will help prevent both aircraft being detected at the same time by a bandit. But the trade-off with this in the sim is that it can be harder for you to see your wingman as a result. So you want to use this two-ship line of breast formation most of the time. This will give you the highest degree of support for your flight before you start an engagement. It's going to give you good visual scan cross coverage, and the lead can easily monitor the wingman. In this way, it allows for mutual support to be available when you're attacking or you're defending. And if you use an altitude stack high or low, this can prevent both aircraft being spotted at once. This formation is hard to maintain though, if the lead is maneuvering aggressively. It's also harder to support a sequence attack against a ground target if its exact location is unknown. 
Back form needs you to understand how to look for bandits, and by flying line abreast, you and the wingman will fly a position that provides mutual support. The areas to scan around the formation overlap and are prioritised, with each sector cleared in order from close range, high, low, then out deep. We start out looking at Leeds' priorities. He wants to look forward of the 3-9 line first, then the inside of the formation, and then outside of the formation. So the area in front of the 3-9 line is going to be Leeds' primary responsibility. It's going to be looking for immediate threats, terrain, as well as looking out for landmarks used for navigation as well as the objectives. After that, he looks to the inside of the formation, which is going to be his secondary responsibility. And this is the goal of clearing the wingman at 6 o'clock and beyond to help keep him safe. And then Lee will look to the outside of the formation. This will help back up the wingman scan in this area. And then we're going to have a look at the wingman now. So the wingman scan priority is a little bit different. His priority is going to be looking inside of the formation, and then outside of the formation, and then he's going to look forward to the formation last of all. So the primary responsibility for the wingman is to look inside of the formation out past lead. This will help clear the lead 6 o'clock and beyond. After he's cleared the lead 6 o'clock and beyond, he then looks outside the formation. That way he can see any threats coming inbound that way. And then last of all, the wingman looks in front of the 3-9 line and forward of the formation. to back up the lead scan looking for immediate threats and terrain objectives, things like that. So just as a general rule for your scanning technique, um, as you're moving around the different sectors, um, you will pause briefly and focus on a point um, that's going to be fixed. So that could be a piece of terrain, a piece of the ground, or even a cloud. So no matter what point it is you're looking at, you want to keep your overall viewpoint as still as possible. By having a uh, frame of reference that isn't moving, when you keep your eye fixed on a certain point, it's going to be naturally drawn to any kind of um, relative movement. Now of course when we're out flying, the only objects that are going to have enough relative movement um, due to their speed that's going to catch our eye are going to be other airplanes. And the amount of relative movement you see is going to be determined uh, exactly by how the bandit is flying in relation to you. So if the bandit is flying directly towards you, you know, whether it's either from the front, back or the side, Relative movement is going to be harder to spot compared to if the bandit's flying 90 degrees to your current course. Alright, so for this example, um, I'm flying as wingman for the bus driver, and uh, essentially I'm doing this, you know, the line of breasts we've been talking about, and I'm doing my usual scan, you know, pausing for that brief moment to try and spot something, and uh, having to catch something out in front. I'm not sure of what it is exactly, um, end up identifying it as a 110. As we see as it makes its turn. So from here we've gone from this pre-engagement phase where we're flying a line abreast looking for targets um, as well as defending against targets. And now we're going to prepare to be offensive so from here we kind of widen our separation a little bit. And this way we can kind of see um, who this uh, bandit is going to commit on if it's going to commit on anyone at all. So by flying this formation initially and conducting our scans we've created that mutual support aspect but now we can also um, increase our offensive effectiveness by creating a separation and see who this bandit wants to attack. As the bandit starts turning towards us, uh, bus driver identifies it as committing towards him. So because his bus driver is on the right hand side of the formation, his goal is going to be to make a left turn um, and hopefully avoid any fire from that 110. So as that 110 tries to make his attack, he ends up turning in front of me and then I can make uh, my attack against him from his 6 o'clock position. So after dealing with 110, I uh, took some damage in return uh, for damaging him pretty badly. And uh, as a result of the way the fight went, um, Buster and I lost sight of each other. So what you need to do is uh, re-establish your mutual support as soon as you can. And this will require descriptive call-outs of where you are, referencing the landmarks around you. So your wingman will hopefully be able to recognize where you are and get eyes in your direction and hopefully spot you. So with bus driver saying he's over a town, as I begin my turn here, I'll look out in that direction can see the airplane there and it looks like it's him so I reference him and I say I'm at your left 10 o'clock high I'm going to be maneuvering now to uh, fall in on your left 9 o'clock in line of rest we we'll just maneuver the airplane accordingly I'll roll out into the approximate line of rest position and then he regains visual on me when I'm here and then we can just um, head back to our lines and continue our scan to have our mutual support back
being able to reform the formation after you've uh, gone through a fight. It's very dependent on effective communication, being able to recognize the landmarks that your wingman is giving you, and also actually being able to spot your wingman in order to get in position. And the lead aircraft in this example, so with the one looking out the front doing all the navigating and things like that. And we try and keep that stable reference looking for targets. And a quick check of uh, the wingman's position, make sure he's not getting attacked out of the sun. And going to the outside of the formation, checking out 6 o'clock, up high, out far. And you see there's an icon there which I didn't spot at the time. And this is what I was referring to earlier, when an aircraft is flying directly at you, there isn't too much relative movement, which will make it very hard to spot them. So as we're continuing the scan, uh, looking around, that airplane's going to get closer and closer to me. Because of his high closure flying directly at us, I didn't end up seeing him. But when I end up looking behind us, to have a quick check, I spot it, call out bus driver to make his brake turn to the right in towards me, to help bring the bandit closer. And the bandit ends up breaking off and then uh, giving up on that attack. It's kind of showed another advantage by flying a little bit further separation here because the bandit was only able to spot bus driver and didn't spot me. Uh, because if he did spot me, then he would have attacked me first before moving on to attack bus driver. So in this example, um, as we look around, there will be an aircraft up to our right, 3 o'clock high. And uh, because it's not flying towards us, there is a little bit more relative movement. And um, because this aircraft is in a dive, it has faster air speed than us. And it's moving towards the formation that we're on comms with at uh, around about my 12 to 1 o'clock position off in the distance. So we'll speed up the time as that 109 is gaining. Uh, we do make the call out to that formation, but they don't spot it until the last kind of second. What ends up happening is they all kind of break together. So even though these airplanes are flying together, um, they're not truly coordinating together because they all just tend to break away at the same time. Um, so that kind of alludes to what I mentioned before, how if you don't use the contracts, you tend to just be a group of airplanes flying together in the same airspace. That's about all I want to cover uh, for tactical formation in this video though. So if I enjoyed it, remember to use the like button and if you have any feedback, you can leave a comment as well. And until next time though, remember to fly safe and always check your six.